Hey everyone, in this video, I am going to show you how to build a complete full stack application with Next.js, Shadzian UI, and Drizzle ORM in minutes. All right, first, we'll run this command to initialize a Next.js app. Second, we'll cd in to the new project, and then we're going to run this command. npx shadriz at latest init. And then we'll get that installed. And then I'm going to choose a database library. So for this, I'm going to choose Better SQLite 3 since it is a demo. And it's going to ask, do you want to use AuthJS for authentication? And I can select no or yes, but I'm going to say yes there. And then I am going to select all for the auth providers. Uh, and then I'll hit enter. And then it's going to ask me which session strategy I would like to use. So uh, I know that I'm going to need JWT because uh, right now, if you pick credentials, uh, that only works with the JWT provider. Uh, but if you were only doing OAuth, then you could use the database session strategy. All right, so that is going to kick off uh, the initialization process. All right, so it looks like the setup was successful. And it's also provided this reminder here, which is a checklist of things that you still have to do. So you still have to set up the GitHub provider and the Google provider. So there's some instructions for that. Uh, but I'm going to skip that in this video and just go straight to these steps here. So it says update the DB URL in .env.local. So if we take a look at the environment variables, you can see that uh, the DB URL is already set since we're using SQLite. But if you chose MySQL or Postgres, uh, you're going to have to update that with um, the URL for your database. All right, so now we can just run the migrations. So I'll go ahead and generate the migrations. And then I'm going to run the migrations. All right, so now our database is set up. And I'm going to run this command here to create a user. So this is just a convenience script uh, that Shadris provides so that we can just create a user for the credentials provider. All right, so our user is created. And just so you can see, or just to prove that, I'm going to run SQLite. And there's our user. All right, so at this point, we can start the next server. All right, so here is what Shadrez set up for us. This is the home page. So here is the hero uh, and the slogan, ship in minutes instead of days, spend more time creating less time on boilerplate. It's free and open source. These are the technologies that it uses. Uh, so if we go to the docs, uh, you can read about uh, the steps uh, to get everything set up. And then if you go to dashboard, that'll just redirect you to the sign-in. So here is the sign-in page with our GitHub and Google provider. And I will sign in with that test user. All right, so now we are in this dashboard. So this is just static data. It's just here as kind of a starter boilerplate. Um, and then there's a profile and a settings, which uh, this is something that, you know, specific to whatever application you're building, but is just provided here as boilerplate. Okay, let's start building more interesting things with the scaffolding command. So I'm gonna run npx shadriz at latest dash h and then that'll show me the command so I'm going to do scaffold dash h and this will show me some examples all right so if I wanted to create a blog right it, it'll it has some examples on how to create like a typical blog app here so uh, let's go to the SQLite examples so we have uh, one where we're using UUID as a primary key, one where we're using auto increment, and then a foreign key example here. 
So let's just keep it simple for now. And I'll go ahead and pick this one. So I'll go ahead and copy that. And I'll go back down here and I'll run npx shadres at latest. And I'll paste in the scaffold command here. Okay, so just to explain what, what's going on here, um, this is the name of the table. Post is the name of the table. This is the database dialect, and we're using SQLite here. And then these are our columns. So you can see that we have a, a primary key, uh, an ID, uh, that is a text field, and we want to default it to UID v7. And then here's the title, and then here's a created at timestamp, which defaults to now. All right, so we can make this public by just leaving it like this, but if we wanted this to be private and uh, require authentication to view these um, uh, this scaffolding or this these views, then we'll have to add a dash p. So let's make this public for now. So I'm just going to hit enter, and then I'll have to run npx drizzle kit generate. And then npx drizzle kit migrate. And then let's go back to our app and then go to the post route. And so here it is. Here is our post table. Let's go to new and create a post. Title my post submit. And then here's the table with the columns that I specified. Uh, there is a detail view, and then there's also an edit view. And I can delete this. All right, now if I wanted it to be in the dashboard, right, or just in the private section that requires authentication, uh, let's create another, uh, another thing. Okay, so let's go here. And let's change this to product, okay? So let's say product. And I want this to be private, okay? So I can do a dash P or a dash dash private. And this will uh, make this a private route. And I'll run drizzle kit generate npx drizzle kit migrate. All right, so let's go back to the app. Now, if I go to the product route, you can see that this is now part of this dashboard, right? So I can create things here. My product. Okay, so there it is. Now, if I were to sign out and I try to access product, it's just going to redirect me to the sign-in now because that is a private uh, resource. Now, if I go to post, I should still be able to access this because we didn't specify that as private. All right, let's take a quick tour of everything that these two commands generated for us. So let's go to our actions. You can see we have our post actions and our product actions. Now, if I go into one of them, you can see that the post was a public thing, so you don't see any authentication happening in here. Uh, let's go to product. You can see that it does require authentication. All right, so let's go to our app router. You can see that we have these two route groups here, private and public. So if I go to private, there's the dashboard page. All right, it's just some static boilerplate uh, to get started with. And then here is our product CRUD view. So there's the delete page, edit page. Okay, this is all generated. And then our profile page, our settings page, and then here's the layout where we check for the session. So you have to be logged in in order to see these routes. Okay, so let's take a look at the public. So here is the Shadrez documentation. So feel free to delete that if you don't want this in your repo. And then our public post routes. Now, if we look at the uh, layout here, you can see that it does not require that session. 
so these are public. And then some auth JS uh, route stuff. And then here is our sign in page. So this was all generated for us based on our provider options. Our global CSS, so a lot of Shad CN styling here. Layout. And then here is our home page. Now, if you want the Next.js homepage, you just got to disca discard these changes with Git, and then you can get back the uh, Next.js homepage if you want. But you're probably going to design your own homepage anyways. And then here are our components. So we're using tan stack table. And then uh, here is our post form, delete form, update form, and then the same for the products. These are our Shadsian Radix UI components that uh, Shad was installed for us. And then footer and header, all of our drizzle migrations here. So you can see, uh, you know, the uh, user stuff, the post, the product, and then our lib, we have some configuration stuff in here, our database instance. And then this schema file is automatically regenerated every time we uh, run the scaffold command. And this was a Shadzian thing. And then all of our schemas are put into here as separate files. So here's our post, our product, and then all of the auth JS stuff is in here. So the user and the account and session stuff. And then uh, these are our scripts. So here's the create user script. So it's useful to have some kind of example so you can get started. If you need to write a backend script, you can do it, model it after this. And then this is a programmatic way to run migrations. Uh, and then I have this SDB here because we want to have a, uh, we want to use a single connection to run migrations. Um, it's a recommendation uh, on Drizzle. Uh, so I keep it as a separate thing. So the SDB is for scripts. And then this one is for the application. Usually you have a connection pool if you're using Postgres or MySQL. So it's a separate thing. And then we have some styles here. So these are the styles for the uh, documentation. So feel free to delete this if you no longer need that. Auth.js configuration. So you can see we have our GitHub and Google provider. We have a credentials prov provider. Uh, and then just some basic uh, check for the password. And so we're using bcrypt for that. And then components JSON, this was a shad CN thing. Our drizzle configuration. So you can see we're using a glob pattern. So everything in the schema is loaded. All right, and then, yeah, so package JSON, these are the dependencies. There's not too many. You know, we, we're using um, as few dependencies as we can. Uh, and I, I forgot to mention, we're also using Zod for validation. So if you go back to a schema and you look at this, um, this is provided to us by Drizzle Zod. So this creates a Zod schema so that we can uh, validate our data as it comes into our action, right? So here, here's the safe parse, right? Uh, but if we wanted to customize the validations, we can do that. So, you, you know, you could add an object here and then add additional validation rules. All right, so that's pretty much it. That is a quick demo of Shad Riz, and as uh, this is being developed, I'll probably release more tutorials on this. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching.